Hello everyone. So we have already seen about one of the component of FPD that was retainer. Now moving on towards the next that is connectors from FPD. What is the definition for connector? So it is a portion of fixed dental processes that unites the retainers and the pontic. So these are like the three basic components of the FPD that is retainer, pontic and connector. Now these are your retainers which goes and sit on the abutment. Over here this is the pontic. So the component that joins this both that is the pontic and the retainers over here this portion that colored portion is nothing but your connector so connector as the name says it connects something so it is connecting the retainer and the pontic so the types of connector are so they are basically of two types rigid and non-rigid rigid as the name says they are immovable and non-rigid so they have slight movement in them so rigid they are again of three types that are cast soldered and loop and non-rigid are these three that is tenon mortis splint pontic then cross spin and wing connectors so the rigid connectors, so the connectors that do not allow any movement and when they are indicated when the entire masticatory load is to be transferred onto the abutments. Now we have seen in the selection of abutments, so the abutments are like there are various criteria for the selection of them. So if now your abutments, they are too good that you can transfer all the masticatory load on them. So in that case, you're using the rigid connector as they do not allow any movement. So they can be directly cast as a part of the multi-unit fixed partial denture. Now over here, this is directly cast like you're making a complete one unit of it or what you do is you are making different units and then you are joining all the units with the help of soldering that is you are joining them so you are joining different units so this is nothing but cast or solder then a loop connector it is used in the case of existing diastema is to be maintained in the fixed partial denture now if the patient they have diastema anterior diastema which is present so in that case what you do is you are using this loop type of connector so it is mainly cast and care should be taken that tissue contour is to be followed when you are fabricating a loop connector so in this the tissue contour is to be followed when you're doing this fabrication of a loop connector the design is the size shape and the position it all influence the success of the processes an ideal connector will enhance the ease of cleansing it should have adequate strength and it should be aesthetically acceptable so this is the three basic thing that you need to remember for connector that they should be easy to clean then they should have adequate strength and they should be ex and they should be aesthetically acceptable now how is the design of the connector so first is the size so it should be large enough to prevent the distortion or the fracture during the function so they should have a proper length or size and they should not be too large because of that now if the connector they are too large so it will become like ineffective to control the plug and it is unesthetic so the size it should be enough to prevent the distortion and the fracture the next is the tissue surface so the tissue surface is it should be curved facio-lingually for efficient cleaning so in this when you are making a connector so it should be curved facio-lingually then buccolingually it should be elliptical in shape then mesodistillase it is shaped to create a smooth transition from one fpd component to other and it is like it is similar to meniscus so meniscus is now we have seen in 12th standard like we have that test tube then we have this meniscus like lower meniscus upper meniscus so it should be like that only like there should be a smooth transition from one component to the other mesodistally then in the anterior connector they should be placed towards the lingual embrasure for aesthetics because if you are placing more towards the buccal embrasure so obviously it will hamper the aesthetic so in anterior they should be placed in the lingual embrasures now moving on towards the non-rigid connectors. So these connectors, they allow the limited movement between the retainer and the pontic and they have little amount of flexibility. Now they are non-rigid. So because of that, they have little amount of flexibility. So they are like flexible. Now what are the indication like where exactly you need to use this non-rigid connectors? So it is when the parallel path of insertion, it cannot be achieved in the preparation. Now when you know like we have that path of insertion, like it is the path in which you remove and you place your prosthesis so it is like your abutment they should have a parallel path of insertion but when you do not have this parallel path of insertion so in that case you need to use this non-rigid the next is spear abutment so now what exactly is spear abutment Pure abutment is this picture now over here now you can see there's an abutment which is present and there's a edentulous space which is present on the either side of this abutment so this becomes your pure abutment in which you will see there is edentulous space present on either side of it 
so in that case you need to use non rigid connectors then the other one is periodontally unfavorable abutments to reduce the amount of stress to the tooth now when you know your tooth or your abutments they are strong enough to get all that load so in that case you are using the rigid connector but when you know that your tooth or the abutments they are not like periodontally strong so in that case what you need to do is you need to reduce the amount of stress on the tooth so because of that you need to use this non rigid connectors and hence it is also called as a stress breakers now the types almost all type of them so there are basically three types of non rigid so almost all of them they consist of a male and a corresponding female component so we are going to see like what exactly it is the shape and the configuration they differ to accommodate the movements between the pontic and the retainer which is required so now it is a non rigid so obviously there is a limited movement which is present between the retainers and the pontic so first one is tenon mortis connector so tenon it is a male component and it is attached to the pontic and mortis it is a female component so this mortis it is attached to the retainer so you have to remember tenon is for pontic and mortis is for retainer like you are making this mortis component on the retainer and tenon on the pontic now over here in this diagram over here this portion the spaced portion becomes your mortis that is the female component and over here the extra portion that you are making on the pontic that becomes the tenon that is the male component so their alignment it must be parallel to the path of placement and they can be made free hand or they are mild or they are prefabricated plastic patterns it can be used now over here now you can see this is a pier abutment so in this case what you do is now this is the mesial portion in which like this is the portion of the fpd in which you have made this mortise so what you do is first you cement this portion which contains this mortise so now over here now you can see you have cemented that portion of the one which is containing the female component that is mortise and then what you do is then you place this portion of the fpd of this tenon which is containing this tenon and then you just lock this tenon into this place of this mortise so this is nothing but a tenon mortise connector The next one is the split pontic connector so it is used in the case of pier abutment where a minimal amount of movement is required to maintain the abutment health so over here now this is your pier abutment now you can see there are edentulous space which is present on the both side of this abutment so the pontic it is split into mesial and the distal half so over here this is your pontic so this pontic itself you are dividing it into two halves that is mesial and the distal half then which are attached to their respective retainer so now over here now you can see this is suppose your mesial half so over here this mesial half it is connected to this retainer and over here this is your distal half of the pontic so this is like connected to the respective retainer so a shoe key is incorporated in the mesial half and the keyway it is incorporated in the distal half now over here now you can see this is a shoe or a key so it is like a key and this is a lock so you are inserting this key into a lock so this is nothing but now you have to remember that you are incorporating this key into the mesial half of your component and you are incorporating this lock or a keyway into the distal half so this assembly it engages when the fpd is seated in the position now over here what you do is you have to remember that whenever you are like fabricating a non rigid component or non rigid connector so in that case first you are going to cement the mesial half of it so over here now you can see first you are cementing the mesial half and then what you do is then you cement the distal half and this keyway so this key it goes into this keyway and your connector it gets locked and this is how your fpd is for the split pontic connector now the next one is the cross pin and wing connector so this is like same as that of your split pontic connector but this cross pin and wing connector they are used in the case of tilted abutment now this is the tilted abutment now you can see this is the distal abutment and this is the mesial abutment so in this case your distal abutment it is tilted so in that case you are using this cross pin and wing connector so the wing it is attached to the distal retainer now this is your distal retainer and you are attaching a wing so this portion is your wing now it looks like a wing and hence it is known as a wing connector so this wing it is attached to the distal retainer and what you are doing in this cross pin is you are cementing the distal portion first and then you cement the mesial portion now we have seen in the other two we are first cementing the mesial portion so in cross pin you are cementing the distal portion first so what you have done is now you have made this wing on the distal retainer and then you are cementing this on the distal abutment tooth and after that what you do is you are making this 
cross pin on the pontic itself so this is your pontic so you are making this cross pin on the pontic and then you are cementing this mesial portion so this is how it looks after the cementation so this wing and cross pin it engaged into itself and they get interlocked between itself so this is how it works that is the cross pin and wing connector so this was all about the non rigid one so basically it's like you need to construct a non rigid connector in the case where your abutments they are not strong that they can withstand the masticatory forces so because of that what you do is you incorporate a component in your connector itself so that your forces they are like the so the forces they are minimized so this is nothing but the non rigid ones so this was all about the connectors in fpd i hope you found this video helpful and if you did then please like comment share and do subscribe to my channel thank you so much